Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So, Bill, <laughs> we were just getting all the boats ready for a hurricane. hurricane. So basically a hurricane is hitting us tomorrow. We don't know exactly where it's going to land, but we wanted to get a, you guys a video and stuff. So, so basically today's video is about the major mistake home buyers make in Florida. And it's true. A lot, a lot of people buy homes mm -hmm. in Florida. And I could see the mistakes that they're making because, you know, I'm talking to them, I'm doing the inspection part of it. And, but it's not my, I'm not a realtor to say, hey, you know what? You're really, you know, making a mistake. Yeah. And I work with some really, really good realtors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the realtors I work with, um, you know, she actually talked to somebody and said, hey, this home is not good for you. You think right. you could fix it, but you really can't afford it. Right you know to to fix it you must run into that yeah it happens a lot um you know i had this conversation we, we spoke about it briefly uh just the other day with a, a, a buyer seller kind mm -hmm. of combination and it's this is this happens a lot this isn't something that's uh very abnormal and you know, they, they, they see things online, they hear stuff, you know, because they start doing their research, right? And they're like, well, I could do this and I could do this and I could do this, but they don't realize that the, ex like you said, like the expense to do some of those things just aren't there. Like, you know, maybe do a, um, a HELOC to get out to buy the new house and then sell the other house and float two mortgages and things like that, where that sounds great so that they don't have the stress of selling and buying at the same time. But if you can't support both mortgages, you could be in trouble. You could, re even if you could, and you're just, you, you get close, you really put yourself at a risk. So you have to make sure you work with your lender and you know that your money is solid. So here, here's, here's one. I did an inspection, super sweet lady. She's, she's in her mid eighties and, mm -hmm. and lovely lady. And I did the inspection for her and she's still driving. Mm -hmm. But she's having, you know, a little bit of a hard yeah. time driving. And I could tell to get into the, her development, mm -hmm. I'm scared to pull out of her development or pull in. <laughs> right. Okay. She's going five miles an hour to try to park into a parking space. You know, if, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but it, it is. Yeah, you know? it's, it's hard. Yeah. And to just get out of her development and then she's looking at a condo because the realtor said oh this condo is perfect for you it's on the third floor with no elevator oh no it's one of the older ones oh wow no yeah so i'm like i said something to the realtor i didn't say anything to the buyer i'm like well she wants this and she wants that and she, she can make it up here it's, it's only you know the third floor i was like i have a hard time climbing three floors yeah so to me that's an example of it's the wrong home for the person. Yeah, I would I would agree with you. Obviously, we don't know the entire situation, no. but that's where it comes into planning, you know, and really sitting down and thinking. Now, obviously, you know, there's certain things that you shouldn't really say, and if that's what the client wants, that's what the the customer. Gets. I know, like but, I know, as realtors, you know. I know as realtors, you can't say, well, we can't say it's if it's a good neighborhood or a bad neighborhood, you know. Right. There's certain things we can't do, like. But. Okay, as I could say, you know, as a buyer, uh, I'm going to check out the neighborhood. I'm going to see how far it is from work, and right, you know, I'm just going to I'm going to spend a little time in the neighborhood, see if right. I like the neighborhood. Is well, it loud at night, or if it's not loud at night, right. is it a lot of traffic? Well, let's talk about that. Let's hit a few things that okay. are important because, you know, like you said, research the neighborhood. Look, go online, yeah, and yeah. look it up. You know, look up. Like you've, because you've said this, and I know we've said it on different videos, where you go to the property at different times of the day right. to get a feel for the neighborhood. Right. This is a huge investment. So, you know, you coming into the neighborhood one time going, oh, this is great. And then you realize at night, for instance, I had a customer that um, their pet peeve was cars parking on the road. So mm -hmm. they came by a couple times. Right. You know, because that's kind of how I instruct people like, make sure you drive by at different times of day. So you get a feel for the come on the weekends, you know, cause this is what you're going to be living with. This is what you're going to be seeing every single day. And I knew one of their pet peeves is roadway parking. Cause they right. said they hate that they, cause they told me. Well, and, well, I have that pet peeve yeah. in my neighborhood too, because when I'm driving down my street, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they park 
opposite sides of the road. Right. It's during the day, but it's like you have to do like an S drive. Yeah. So Serpentine you know, through. To get through. <laughs> yeah. You know, if there's an emergency vehicle, if both vehicles, you know, some of them aren't that bright. Sorry if you guys are watching this, but they park, one person parks right. Yeah, they double park. They it's double called park. double parking. Yeah. Yeah. So now you have to squeeze between two vehicles. And with me, you know, with, with the bigger truck, it's sometimes like I literally have to bring in the mirrors. Right. Yeah. Because it's tight. So take that, you know, look at that roadway, you know, the how wide your road is if they do allow yeah. some street parking, even if it's temporary. Like in my neighborhood, you can't park overnight in the road. So you have to be in your driveway Same thing or in the with garage. Me. Right. Same so, thing with me. You know, so that's cool. But just, just look at those things. And then traffic patterns. Um, I had another customer, same thing that with yours. Getting out of a new, they, they really, really enjoyed this new construction neighborhood. But I said, in the, we don't know when they're going to put the traffic light in. And you have to, the road's been widened, but they haven't done the traffic yeah. pattern yet. So they have to go east do a U-turn to go back west to get right. to Publix and the mall. and it, it's, But those are all things you have to think about. So we're going to talk about that too. In the meantime, do me a favor. You guys like this kind of kind of consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. But here, the neighborhoods. I went and did a, a video on new construction mm -hmm. in a subdivision. One of my biggest complaints on the new construction was that I won't buy in those big developments. It literally takes 10 minutes just to leave the subdivision it's like the roads are like what 15 miles an hour 20 miles an hour right you know then you have kids and then you have the big houses that are 4,000 square feet with tons of cars and then i don't want to spend 10 minutes driving just to get out of the neighborhood before i have to go to the supermarket or go where i have to go it's not for me Right. So I think that's a mistake when people buy deep in the subdivision. Depending on the subdivision and depending on what people like. Some people prefer driving in the slower paced roads to get, because like, you know, the master plan communities typically have stores in them. You know, so you don't, the whole point is not to leave the subdivision community. You're saying some of those big subdivisions have stores inside them? Yeah. Oh, I never ran into that. Yeah. Avalon has got a store, a school, a couple schools, library. Like my neighbor's got a library and a school and a Sam's Club in it. And yeah, so I don't have I mean, to leave my neighborhood technically, you know, and then there's a car. Oh, now there's a car wash. They put a car wash on the outskirts. So it, it's just that it's, and it's not for everybody, but that's why you should drive around and look. Yeah. So neighborhoods, so you know. neighborhoods are a huge thing. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's another huge thing. All right. A lot of these people are not getting a full home inspection. Maybe they'll get Oof. an insurance inspection and they're yeah. like, Oh, because in Florida, we have what's called a four-point inspection, which is like an insurance inspection. It's like a light inspection. Um, we do look at things, but not as much as if you're getting a full inspection. Right. Yeah, they're, they're totally different. So do not rely on a four-point as your home inspection. In Florida. In Florida, for sure. Because I've heard Jimmy on the phone with people, and I've had the conversation myself with, with some of my customers, and it's like, well, you didn't point out this, you know, but, but that's not on the four point. Yeah, and I tell people, I say, you're buying the house, get a full inspection, yeah. spend the extra couple hundred dollars or $300 or whatever it is. Yeah. Because, you know, and then I do new construction and I do old homes. I do manufactured homes. So we look at everything, multi-million dollars to the cheap stuff. Yep. And I don't care what kind of home there is. I don't think I ever walked into a home and said, you know what? I didn't find a problem. Right. Because every house has a problem. And that is another thing that setting realistic expectations, not only on that your house isn't going to be perfect no matter what, but realistic expectations on your prices. Right. That's the thing I wanted to talk about. Their mistakes are, well, yeah, that it has paneling in there and there's wet spots on the bottom. We'll don't worry about it. We're going to close and then, you know, I'll hire a contractor and fix it. That's a mistake. The reason why it's a mistake is once you, I'm telling you, everybody, <laughs> people make so much mistakes because once you open up a wall or you move a kitchen cabinet or you do something, yep. you, you see other problems that were hidden. Yeah. 
you don't know what's behind the wall. And you, you doing the inspections, me doing construction for years and years and remodels, um, you don't have an idea of what's behind that wall. And you're like, oh, well, I can just move this wall or I'll just move this electric until you really dive in or have a ton of experience. And even then you still don't know everything that's behind that wall. Just watch any of these DIY shows, there's always a problem. Yeah, and if you think that you, you know, you could do it yourself, most of the time you can't. You really can't. You gotta have some knowledge. If you're moving walls and rerouting electric and plumbing. Yeah, you don't know what a support wall is. Yeah. It's... You know, like, I went to an inspection and I'm like, and the buyer was there like, well, the buyer's father was with them and they said, the buyer's father said, it always happens to be buyer's father's like, We'll knock down this wall, we'll take away this beam. I was like, yeah, you don't really want to take away that beam. <laughs> He's like, why not? I was like, because you want that ceiling and then you want that roof. Yeah, you, you don't know? want your roof to sag on you. Yeah. Yeah. And he was yeah. like, no, 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 we'll rig something up. I was like, yeah. Anything can be done for a price. It's how much money do you have? Or how about the house that I went into? They went up in the attic and they cut, they, they cut the <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah, they cut the rafters and stuff. I remember that one. You know? I actually came by, so when I and came I'm by like, to see Yeah, I'm like, why did they, why did they kind of, oh, we, they needed more space for yeah. storage. They couldn't get their boxes in because everybody likes to. So they have truss framing and they're like, well, it's in our way. Well, it's there for a reason, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. It supports, and, and the top of it all, on that house, it had tile roof. You know how heavy tile roof is? Yeah, that was in Tarpon, wasn't it? Yeah. That, it was, tarp, that was a Tarpon house, yeah. right? Yeah, I remember that. that so I, I want you to talk about another thing. <laughs> like, I see, and I fault the mortgage companies too on this, but people are buying these houses and they're stretching their budget to the point that it's a husband and wife working, mm -hmm. but if one of them loses their job, right, they're in trouble. I want you to talk about over budgeting. Right. So it's stretching your budget out too far. Is, is detrimental. And I know the lenders, so this is the, the reason you really need to work with a quality lender that is really gonna show you the pros and cons and explain and understand. It's same thing with, with a real estate agent. So you don't wanna go, you never wanna really stretch your budget, I get it. But you don't wanna put the cart before the horse. Well, I'm gonna make more money in the future. I get that. Yeah, or I'm gonna get this raise, I'm gonna, you know, so on and so forth. I, I totally understand that, but you know, sometimes life happens and you don't know. So you don't want to go to that max debt to income ratio because unknown things happen. Mm -hmm. when, especially when you're owning a home. For instance, your you know, your air conditioner breaks, you know, that you just bought. Just because it's brand new or just because it's only five years old. Uh, doesn't mean that you know you can't have a power surge and it fries the thing and you have to buy an entirely new one. You know, so there's five, six, seven thousand dollars potentially. You know, that do you are you going to put it on a credit card? Do you have the cash to pay for it? Um, you know, just having reserves. You know, and God forbid you get into an accident or you get laid off at work because it's just reality sometimes. Do you have reserves? So not being overstretched is really, really important. Very important. I agree with you, you know, 100% of that. But here's the one that's getting a lot of people in trouble, especially here in Florida. Mm -hmm. They're not understanding how property taxes work in Florida, and they're not understanding homeowners insurance. No. You see, where we are right now is, uh, this is my property that I keep my boat and everything. All these people over here, you know, they're not like great houses, but they're insurance minimum twelve thousand dollars right and now after the storm it's probably gonna go up again it's probably gonna go up again it's yeah, probably yeah. gonna be about sixteen thousand dollars a year yeah it's you have to understand property taxes how they work and insurance and i've found that people who have not purchased a home in a long time you know or first-time home buyers or people that come from different states it's the biggest challenge and they just don't understand it because it, they're used to where they live. And I totally, I'm like, I'm used to where I live. I just, so I know, so if I went somewhere else, I'd be in the same boat. And I would hope that I had an agent that would explain these things to me in the beginning when you're doing, you know, uh, as a new buyer, you know, consultation, you're sitting down and you're making a plan uh, because that's really important to understand how much potential money is going to come out of pocket on top of, because the lenders, some lenders, let me rephrase this, are very bad at this 
Most of them are pretty good, but there's a couple that I've dealt with that are very, very bad at estimating insurance and taxes here really in Florida. Really bad. So here's an example with, with Florida. You could have two houses next to each other. Same property, same exact house. I don't care, duplicate house. Mm -hmm. And the person on one side, on one house is paying 3,000 in property taxes and the person in the other house is paying $12,000 because it depends on when they bought it because yep. we have ex explain because so many people get in here and then they call and they, they complain to the realtor hey my taxes jumped you know 200 percent right so and really that is that's you know there's a bunch of layers and there's a lot of information you know that you get at one time when you're buying a house from your realtor and it's a tough you know you're 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 forgetting things, you know, I totally get it because it's a ton of information. I don't remember everything that people tell me when I'm sitting down going through contracts and stuff. Um, but this was one of those that's really, really important. So when you go on to the county website and you, because it's, it's public record here in Florida, you can look to see how much the property taxes are on a particular house. Now, which is useless. Right, because it's based on that person's estimated or uh, assessed value when they purchase the home, and then it has incremental raises over What's the, the years. What's the cap, like 3%? It's, it's roughly three, three and a half percent. So, and, and there's a whole calculation, but it, just for easy math, so you, you can understand this. Then, you know, so let's say you purchased a home at 200,000 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and you sat in that house for 20 years, now you decide, ah, I'm gonna move. And you go to sell that house, but now that house is now worth $500,000. You've renovated, it looks amazing. Obviously just normal property value gains, uh, home value gains yeah. has 20 years. You know, you've got a lot of equity built up in the house. Now that person comes in and buys it for 500,000. Well, you're looking at a tax bill just as an arbitrary number, let's say it's $2,000 a year. Well, that's the person that currently owns the property. Now you're gonna trigger an assessment. Right. When you purchase the home. And that assessment will be on whatever the value the, the of the home. Value. And then you'll be homesteaded if you live in it, and then you'll have the only the three percent rise. But that's why the difference is at that time from that day. So twenty years from now, that five hundred thousand dollars is probably not going to look super bad. Yeah, but at the beginning forward. it is. Right. And then insurance in Florida is just stupid, and we won't even get into the insurance thing. It's just stupid. Before yeah. you even make an offer, find out what the insurance is going to cost you. On a ballpark. That. Ballpark. And the other thing you have to watch out for Florida, too, is the people that are making mistakes is when they're in a flood zone, okay? Yeah. So when you're, when you're buying a, a house, do not buy in a flood zone because you're going to be paying a lot more money. Unless it's on a stilt. Like in this neighborhood, the houses that are on stilts, yeah, I would buy those all day long mm -hmm. because they're on stilts. Right. You know? Because I know that if they get flooded, we have bigger problems, but I wouldn't buy a ranch in a flood zone. Right, it's tough. And it doesn't have to be Gulf Coast waterfront. You gotta no. remember there's there's flood zones all over right. Florida because we're flat. There's rivers, there's tributaries, there's different things. So don't forget that other areas are flood zones as well. I mean, if you just in this area alone, if you go in a couple miles, so you hit US 19, which is like our major thoroughfare, it's generally, the rule of thumb is anything on the west side of 19 is pretty much gonna flood. So you wanna try to stay on the east and, side. And here's another thing with your real estate. for the river. <laughs> yeah, here's another thing. Take everything that your realtor says, you know, you may be friends with them or everything, fine, listen to them, don't listen to them, you know, but get other opinions too. Just mm -hmm. like you're going to a doctor, Get, I'm not saying go to another realtor, but talk to somebody that lives there for a long time. Yeah. You know, ask around. Don't just take everything that a realtor says as the golden rule. That's the way it is. Because they're restricted on some things that they can say and they can't say. They are restricted. Am I correct or am I not correct? There's, there's equal housing laws. Right. And we can't violate or steer. Right. So, but That's a law. We don't want to go to jail. Right. But, you know, what, what, how do you handle... If somebody says, Bill, would you live here? How do you handle that? Oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> it's really honestly easy. Where I want to live and where you live, it's two different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I have different likes than you have. And you have different... So you don't... You don't. You well, don't, you have different risk tolerances too. So you don't say, I wouldn't live here. No. Okay, or I would live here. Right, because my tolerances are different for certain right, things. Right, so that's what like, I'm... Like, you don't like neighborhoods that have long roads. 
I, I don't, don't care. I, I don't like gated communities. Yeah, I live in a gated community, and it has a really if, long if road, I, so it's I, a double if whammy. If I have to wait for a <laughs> gate to go up, I'm out. Jimmy's going to have a heart attack. I just, I can't wait for that gate to open up really, really slow. My gate's open fast, thank goodness. <laughs> Anyways, that's today's video. Do me a favor, consider subscribing to this channel. It really helps out, and we will catch you in the next one. You ever think that? Nope, that's good. We appreciate you watching, and uh, here's the sun before right. the rest of the storms. So thanks, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.